Well, many years ago, I was involved in a Bible study uh, on the book of Matthew. And when we came to the section in chapter 25 where Jesus says to the righteous people, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you uh, invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked in after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. The righteous looked at him and, and said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothes you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Well, it became evident to me from this study that caring for those who were less fortunate than me was important to Jesus. So if Jesus thought it was important, then it needed to be important to me. So I began to look for ways to serve others in need. About that time, our church began to talk about starting a food pantry. I decided to jump in and help get this new ministry started. At that time, the food and clothing ministries of our church were open on different days, and the food pantry was open just one day a week. Because it was so new and word was slow to spread, we might sit there during our shift and serve one or two people, if any. Then it grew to be three or four, 10 to 12. And when Darren came to First Baptist, he suggested that our food and clothing ministries be open four days a week. Now Loretta says that the food pantry serves over 125 households per week. So that ministry has really grown. Well, several years and several moves for our family passed by, and I began serving in the downtown clothing ministry. That certainly was an eye-opening experience. The first day, I had to tell some of the men I shopped with that we had no shoes that would fit them. We had no shoes, period. We had no jeans that would fit them. We had no belts that they could wear to hold up the jeans that they did have. I gained a more worldwide view that day, a view that was bigger than my normal t uh, tunnel vision, way bigger than my normal me-centered vision. Well, then I began to hear talk about a new caring center that was going to be started at the First Baptist South Campus. And God made it perfectly clear to me in my heart of hearts that I was going to be involved there. And strangely enough, I had a strong feeling that Eric would invite me to be in leadership. I could hardly wait for him to ask me so I could say yes. Isn't that crazy? Uh, we opened the door, the doors in August of 2012 and followed a very similar pattern to the one that we experienced with the downtown food pantry. Some days we would have one or two clients, if any. Then it began to be three or four. Then it was 10 to 12. Our record to date has been 23 households and five counselors for a total of 118 people. And those households received almost 500 clothing items in that one day. Well, during those five and a half years, we have seen God answer prayer, specific prayers for specific needs at the Caring Center, specific prayer for clients who trusted us with their prayer needs about their family situations, about difficult life situations, uh, new jobs needed or new places to live needed. We've seen God use our Caring Center to meet specific physical needs of families. Innumerable, innumerable times, we have helped children who have found themselves in foster care with only the clothes on their back. One time we had a union schools counselor come in to shop for a young boy who was in great need. We had just had our annual coat night the, no, the night before and I was very skeptical about whether we would be able to find a coat for him for she wanted clothes and a coat uh, to help him. Amazingly enough, there was a boy's coat, clean and fresh, in the clothes dryer. Um, it was red and black, Union's colors. It was a size 10 to 12, the size of that young boy, and it was in perfect condition. I was in awe of how God protected that coat in the clothes dryer to be there available for that young boy, and it still gives me goosebumps and an incredulous feeling when I think about it. One of the biggest blessings has been the volunteers that I have been honored to work with. There have been many times that the need for help has been great, 
and I've been concerned that we weren't going to be able to handle it, but God, through our faithful volunteers, always came through, and I am grateful for each and every one I have been blessed to work with and get to know in a personal way. I will miss those daily and weekly interactions with those special friends of mine. I told the volunteers at our appreciation luncheon in November that I now have a new calling. It's my oldest grandson, J.D., who's three. He lives in Tennessee, and he calls to say, Mama J., are you coming to my house? So I thank you, God, and I thank my church for giving me this great opportunity to serve in this unique and much-needed ministry. And I'm thankful to Sarah Ingram, who is the new director and has just stepped in seamlessly and is already doing a wonderful job. Thank you.